Okay, welcome to part two. Now, at the end of part one, I noticed something. Um, if we go back into the uh, PyroSim, I run this, you see what happens right here. This box is moving up. Now, that's okay, but it's not okay if it's cutting our simulation, um, cutting our explosion, okay? So, to avoid that, go into Resize Container, go to max bounds and change this to manual okay and let me use the side go in here and copy the size from the pyro and paste relative references right here and and copy the center and paste relative references right here okay so that way oh it's the same as that and now let's run it there you go that's a lot better okay now you can see the actual thing previously it wasn't like this all right let's uh, move on <clears throat> so we're gonna create flare source now okay let's create a geometry and we're gonna call this flare src you can call it whatever you want I'm sure and I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to change this to polygon and I'm going to leave the radius to the same but change the uniform scale to 0.5 and increase the frequency to 16 then I'm going to clip this so it's like that okay and then I'm going to add normal and give it point normals so you see that okay and then i'm going to add a point wrangle and i'm going to say v at v equals v at n this time multiplied by random at pt num just give it a little bit of variation okay that's all it is Oops, what is this? Random at point num. And I'm gonna say initialize velocity. Okay, good. I'm gonna create a point bob. I'm gonna say initialize fuel. All right, let's dive inside. And I'm going to create another anti-alias noise again. I'm going to connect the position to position. And I'm going to bring in a bind export. Just like before. Just like we did with density. Okay. The only difference is this time it's fuel. And I'm also going to connect... Uh, I might as well add fit range right now and then I will connect this to CD all right good and disable this and let's mess around with the AA noise I'm gonna change the frequency to let's say one point yeah point seven I guess it's all right I'm gonna animate this okay so uh, I'm gonna put in a dollar F on the y-axis of 3d offset so what is it doing it's not doing anything okay that's all right I'm gonna change the amplitude to 3 yeah like that roughness is the same um, all of these can stay the same that's okay well, that's not yeah maybe it doesn't work like that but anyway so what is it that we've got here fuel is sitting at negative 0 0.66 to 0.82 so negative 0 0.66 to 0 0.82 and I'm gonna leave the destination minimum and maximum to 0 0.1 so the fuel is set to 0 to 1 okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a point, 
point velocity. This is a new node in version 18. We've already created velocity, so we're going to keep incoming. And let's enable curl noise. And let's bring the swirl size down. You know what? Let me activate this first of all. Uh, where is it? V. There you go. So you can visualize this while I'm doing it. I'm going to reduce the swirl size. Uh, maybe that looks good. Yeah, something like that. Uh, maybe just. I guess. I, I don't know. Something like that is uh, good. And then increase the grain to two. Now it looks crazy. And the, the idea is to use the pop network and uh, push the points in the directions like that. Okay. You can disable the visualization here also. You can just click that and it'll go away. Let me look at it from a camera perspective. Yeah, that looks good. Now I'm going to create a rest at rest position node. I'm going to create a null and I'm going to call this blast SRC. So, okay, I'm going to create a pop network. Let's dive in. Go to source. Leave everything the same here. In birth, I'm going to put that to zero because it's not relevant. I'm going to change this dollar F. I'm going to activate the points only at frame number four. If you remember, we um, activated the main source at three, I think. Yeah, at three. I want this at four. Okay, just literally S. A frame later and then um, let's leave the constant birth rate at where it is right now we'll come back to this because I think that's too much and life expectancy I want it at 0.1 and life variance at 1 and jitter birth time I'm gonna change it to negative um, so that when it starts it goes down and then up okay that's negative jitter birth okay and then I'm going to change the interpolation source to back, which which pushes it down and then goes back up. Okay. So that looks good. I also want to create something here, right? So I want to create a null. And I'm going to call this seed. And I'll change the shape maybe um, to that one. And I'm going to color this black. And what I will do Let's go into edit parameter interface if it shows up yeah there you go and I will bring in a float and I will call this seed and I'll label this seed uh, with a capital S and accept okay so there is the seed and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in the seed right here and I will say um, plus one two three um, say plus uh, one here but let's go back into the main source and do the same with this seed here where is it the seed right here uh, we will leave that at the same all right so when I change this that changes this is an easy way of changing and getting different results for your explosion all right let's jump back into flare source and into pop network i'm going to add a pop drag again i'm going to change the air resistance let's just look at how uh, you can't see anything all right there you go so that looks like that that's not very good i'm going to add a gravity force I don't know why that is not default, but anyway. Okay, um, it's too much of prop drag. I'm going to change it to 0.2. And 
yeah, that looks slightly better. All right, good. So I'm going to go into collisions and create a ground plane. So it creates it in flare source pop net. I'm going to press L to lay it out and H to fit it. There you go. That looks okay. But with camera perspective this far out, and that's not very good, I think. So let's try and change the velocity that is coming in that we created earlier. I'm going to change this to say 16. All right. Yeah, that's a lot better there. And the reason why it slows down, I mean, it goes so fast out and slows down is because of this pop drag. Okay. If I disable this pop drag, there, that's it. It's just gone crazy. And we don't want that. So we're going to use that. All right. Good. But I know that this is too much, okay? Uh, this is too many particles, so I'm going to bring the birth rate down to 1000. Yeah, that is good. And I love the way it's moving out of the sides. It will create a good explosion, I think. We will see. All right, let's go back out. And I'm going to create a point wrangle and I'm gonna say initialize P scale and I'm gonna say at P scale oops F at P scale equals 0 0.1 because one is uh, usually too much and I'm gonna randomize this P scale okay I'm going to create an attribute, oops, create an attribute randomize. And mm -hmm. I'm going to say rand p scale. Okay, good. I'm going to change the attribute name to p scale. And I'm going to use custom ramp. I'm going to leave the ramp as it is. I'm going to fit the values to say 0 0.04 to 0 0.1 because one is too much oh, definitely and in options you can change the global ski seed or you can actually connect this one maybe we should connect it um, let me see here copy parameter and paste oops paste relative references and we're gonna say plus one two okay looking good and here's the important part and so I'm going to create trail. Uh, trail length is eight. I'm just going to change it to eight. Um, and I'm going to add node. I'm going to put in an add node. Go to polygons by group um, and by attribute. Create an ID. And I'll tell you what. Let me just push this up. There you go. So. And I also got to get rid of that ground plane. I don't like that. So let's put in pop asterisk. So it only brings in the particles. So <clears throat> that's how it looks like right now. Without trail, it won't work. Okay. And I'm using attribute name ID. And you wonder where that comes from. That comes from here. And the pop network automatically creates an ID for each of these points. And we can make use of that. All right. Let's create a resample node. And we're going to say, uncheck that. I want a maximum segment of 16. And this is very important. Go and enable curve U attribute. Which, to explain, it gives you a 0 to 1 from bottom to the top or the full length of the trail. So if I use a color here and say ramp from attribute and use a curve U, you can see how it behaves. So it's wide here, which is one to zero up there. Okay, so zero, one, zero, one, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this out a little bit and I'm going to create a point wrangle and I'm going to say 
jitter noise. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to jitter this along the um, curve U, along the axis by using curve U attribute. All right. And I want to say F at uh, jit scale, I guess you can call it whatever you want. CH ramp jitter ramp comma at curve u. You need a a variable or an attribute or a parameter which has a value of zero to one. Okay, and that's why we 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 need this curve u attribute. Then you click on here. It creates this ramp for us. So first of all, I want to change this to vSpline. Go to these. And I'm going to create a couple of points, one there and one here. Just pull it up a little bit. All right, like that, something like that. Um, I'm going to move this. Yeah, something like that. That's That's good. It, this will come into play later, all right? So if I enable this and create a point pop, I'm gonna say jitter. Um, this will be jitter scale, I guess. This will be the actual noise. Let's um, dive inside. Okay, and I'm going to Create a turbulent noise here. And connect the position to position. And create an add node. And connect the position to this and then the noise to this one. And then I'm gonna connect that to the position. Okay, so you can see it's kind of messed up right now. Okay, which is good. So let's play around with this noise here. It's currently 1D noise, which I don't want. I want 3D noise, so it's in all axis. And I want to change this to original Perlin noise because I like it. It looks cool, I guess. Let's increase the frequency to 10. So it's a lot of little, you know, jitter, I guess. And rest of them I'm gonna just leave it as it is here is where our jitter scale comes into play so what I'm gonna do is before we add it I'm gonna bring in a multiply whoa where is it yeah multiply I'm gonna say multiply this by using our uh, let me bring in a bind and did we call this JIT scale? Uh, JIT scale, yes. So we're gonna call this JIT scale and we're gonna connect the JIT scale to the, um, watch it here, okay. Let me change the display to dark now. It's probably right time, right there. So watch it here. I'm gonna connect the JIT scale to input two and there you go. All right, so let's uh, get out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this color in here so we can make use of this color. So I'm going to now call this, uh, bring in a null, and I'm going to call this source uh, flare source. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into main source and I'm going to copy these four nodes here because I don't want to create it again. I'm lazy. Okay, I'm going to connect the create fuel to flare source. And let's jump into create fuel and have a look at this. And I'm going to leave these as it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another attribute here. And I'm going to call, I'm going to bring in velocity and leave it at default. We need the velocity here. Okay. So we're going to call this surface scatter instead. 
I don't want noise because we already got noise. Okay. So we're just going to go straight into rasterize and we want all this, which is fine. I'm going to leave the voxel size as it is. And I think this is what, yeah, this is actually connected to the main source, but I guess it's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, let me see if this is actually working. Yeah, this is working, which is okay, which is good. I'm going to enable velocity blur and velocity blur is important because it is, these are high velocity streaks that we need velocity blur. If not, it's just going to look weird. Uh, there's something weird happening here. Uh, not sure what that is. So let me reduce the shutter to 0.2. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into pop network. I'm going to change the jitter birth time to none. Okay. And I think that should fix it technically while I'm at it out underscore flares. Okay. That's good. So let's have a look. All right, looking good. Go back to camera one. So now we've created the flare source. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into PyroSim and we're gonna add that here, okay? So let me press and hold Alt and drag this. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm actually gonna change this to main source, SRC. And then I'm gonna call this flare SRC. Okay, so the first thing to do is obviously change the saw path to flare source out flares. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate this slightly differently. Hold shift and middle click, it should open up. FG, it's gonna line it up for you. In frame one, I want to change this to 10, okay? Uh, and in fact, I want to change this to linear this time, okay? I want to change this to frame number four. I want it at 10. Let me get rid of that and let me disable that. And I'm gonna to go to frame number, so, four is 10. At five, I want this to drop to four. And I want it to continue staying at four all the way until frame number nine. These are arbitrary frames, okay? It's, you can choose to do whatever you want. But the shorter this is, the better, okay? At 10, I wanna bring this down to zero just kill it basically so at one is ten up to four which is when it gets activated in the first place as soon as it gets activated it goes down to four and then stays four until frame number nine and then frame ten it's down to zero okay now if I shift hold shift and middle click here you'll see this so this is what we want okay so but like that. All right, good. Okay, run it. Yeah, basically that killed it. All right, that's good. Okay, so what I also want to do is that if you look at this flare source and it just goes like that, okay, and it continues to go out like that. I don't want that, okay, because it's a waste of time. If the source is still there, the simulation will keep reading it in. And I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is it, it'll just slow the sim down. What for? We've we've basically said at frame number 10, you're zero. So there's no point. And no matter what it is here, this is not going to have any impact. Okay, so I'm going to put in a switch right here. And I'm going to bring in a null. And connect to the switch and I'm gonna say at frame greater than 10 switch it meaning there's gonna be nothing coming in all right so basically it's gonna come in like that 
and at 11, that's it. It disappeared, okay? It saves time. All right, let's look at this now. There you go. That's much, much faster, okay? So that's good. I also noticed that this is not working very well. So I'm going to change the padding to 1.5 and um, upper padding to 2 on, on all sides here because it's it's expanding that way okay so yeah that's good okay so what I'm also going to do in the source is I want to change this operation to copy for a temperature and fuel okay both of these should be copy and I'll save this and let me run this okay that is looking good uh, well, it's not really but it will get better uh, maybe I should increase the resolution a little bit more uh, 0.1 how about that okay we're gonna change uh, some settings in pyro solver okay because I'm not very happy with how that looks so in combustion tab, I want to change the um, temperature up to 0.25, which is the default, okay? And then in the smoke tab, I want to change the heat cutoff to 0.4 and blend amount to 0.5. So what is heat cutoff? It's the value of the heat field that at which smoke is emitted, okay? This is to do with the smoke and it's the same with the blend amount, how much of blend blending is required. Um, I also want to go to the gas tab and I want to reduce the flame contribution to 0.2 which is default oops not lock parameter uh, revert to default temperature is gonna be the same fuel we've already changed it and I want to look at this shape here okay I want a lot more disturbance uh, what was the yeah it was 0.82 I'm gonna change it to 1 and shredding I'm gonna set it to default which is 0.5 and sharpening yeah I'm gonna leave it that and turbulence I don't want too much of that so I want to change it to 0.1 which is very little but that's how much I want I don't want anything more okay okay I'm gonna have a look at these um, tabs here right now okay so dissipation I don't want control range from 0 to 3 I want it from 0 to 1 and I'm going to um, put in a point here and I'm also going to put in another point here and I'm going to pull this down so the dissipation isn't that much and let's move on to disturbance tab I'm going to set the cutoff to uh, default values and the block size I'm going to reduce it Okay. Again, you know, these are all from my trial and error methods. Okay, so let's check use control field. Let's go into temperature. Uh, sorry, let's type in temperature here. And um, I want to remap the control field. And I want to pull this up, okay, all the way up here. So disturbance I want the disturbance to happen all the time basically that's what that is all right and I'm gonna pull this very close so these are the values here anyway damn why are you so slow I'm just gonna disable this there you go that's better we can go to shredding and in shredding I'm gonna set all of this to default all of these are going to be default so it's no no change to that and um, yeah that's fine I don't want to do anything here sharpness I'm gonna leave it at default um, turbulence I'm gonna set everything to default here swirl size and everything all of this and the control influence is also set to default and I don't want to remap the control field okay and in confinement let's enable confinement we don't have confinement attribute so we're going to bring in density instead and i'm going to remap this 
to 0 to 1 and control influence is going to be 1 okay so it's basically going to be influenced by the density fully that's what that means so I'm going to go into control field ramp and I'm going to click somewhere here this position to be 0.4 and I want to increase this to 1 so it starts the confinement starts uh, coming into play as soon as basically I think I want to go back into this main source and I want to change something there okay in uh, main source create fuel I'm gonna delete this particle separation I'm gonna make this 0.5 also okay we're gonna leave it at that for now and we're gonna continue and we will fix it we will move on to part three now which is gonna be shockwave okay